All right. Well, it's 1030 and I want to welcome everyone to um, AARP North Dakota's Stretch and Strengthen Yoga Series. My name is Marnie Peel and you can also see Sigrid Strieb on the screen there at Transitions Yoga and she is going to be taking you through the fourth in our Stretch and Strengthen Series, Easing Back Pain. And when we planned this, we did not know that we would all be dealing with a foot plus of snow in which our backs would be in pain, most likely, because many of us are out there moving that snow, making a, our way out of our homes. So hopefully today we'll give you some ease and some tips uh, moving forward. But thank you for being here. Um, again, I'm Marnie Peel with AARP North Dakota. We're so happy to have you. If you know anything about AARP, you know that we work to improve the lives and empower those 50 plus to live their best lives for 50 years, 60 years. Um, health and wellness, of course, is vital to that work. You can't live well if you if you don't feel well. And yoga is a really great way to keep your body and mind flexible and fit. It's truly for every body. And I think you'll really see that today um, as we practice with Sigrid. And uh, spoiler alert, Sigrid is four weeks out from a total hip replacement. And I tell you that because I know that people feel <laughs> like they can't do things if they have these different things, but Sigrid's going to show you ways. Um, we always show the different ways to um, accommodate injuries or sore spots or different things. And she's going to be wonderful about that today and really living it too. So um, I'm so glad Sigrid is here. This program is being recorded and it will be available um, on YouTube, youtube.com slash AARPND. Uh, we have a channel and a playlist for our yoga classes. So you can go and take this again and again, which is uh, all about the practice of yoga, doing it again. We'll have the and also, please, if you've never done this before, please remember to check with your doctor before you begin any new exercise regimen. And with that, enough talk from me. I'm going to turn it over to Sigrid to lead you through our easing back pain class. Sigrid, take it away. Thank, thanks, Marty, and thanks to AARP for having us um, come and be available for you guys to just uh, learn about how to ease back pain. So yoga is not going to cure back pain. So let's just clear all of that up. But remember this simple reminder that motion is lotion. So that's that moment where we can begin to just find some movement. Now, as always, make sure that you are modifying where you need to, finding the edge of where you're at. So here's a little tip. If your face has to do this, then you're too deep in a posture. And so you can come back and uh, kind of dip out of it. So everybody has a different range of motion and just play with where you're at and um, do the best that you've got, okay? And remember oh, to breathe. So with that, we'll start on our backs this morning or right now. Um, so starting on your backs, we'll just come into that reclined space. Um, I've got a couple of blocks that I'll be using throughout practice. You can also use if um, in your at home and you don't have blocks, Soup cans work really great, or those big giant, the like 16 ounce tomato cans also work great um, for a substitute for blocks. So with that, coming onto that, into that reclined space, feeling the feet connect into the floor, and then letting the bay or the back of the head kind of rest down and into the mat. As always, we start with breath. I want you to just kind of um, wiggle the legs side to side and kind of feel what's happening in this sacrum area or this low back or pelvis area, okay? Kind of settle into this space. And then with that, push the feet into the floor, gently pull that tailbone down toward the heels. And from here, you can either keep the knees bent or if it feels good for your back, you can actually extend the legs, bring the legs forward. And then let the palms kind of, or that, shoulder blades kind of gently tuck beneath you. And then again, make any micro adjustments that you need to. I'll take this right hand, bring it to the center of the chest and then the left hand right to the base of the belly here, or maybe just even right beneath the ribs. We'll start with, by feeling the breath, but really concentrating on um, some place that we usually forget about unless we have pain and that's really in breathing into our backside. So we'll start with a deep inhale through the nose. And then an audible exhale. Another deep inhale through the nose. Feeling the ribs expand. Audible exhale. Open the mouth and just let it all out. And then one more breath in that same space. Feeling the breath come in through the nose. Feeling the lungs and the ribs expand. 
and audible open mouth exhale. From here, softly bring the lips together, allow the tongue to fall down and away from the roof of the mouth so you're not clenching the jaw. And then feel the weight of the head release down and into the floor. Now, begin to bring awareness to the back of the ribs here. So kind of maybe right beneath the shoulder blades here, feeling that when you take that next inhale, you'll feel the inhale and feel the ribs move down toward the floor. Okay, for some of us, this is kind of a challenge because we don't even realize that we don't really use the muscles in our back that much. So again, deep inhale through the nose. Feel the back press down toward the floor and slow release on your exhale. In this place, lips can either be uh, together or mouth open for your exhale. Drawing the breath in again for two more breaths here, deep breath, inhale. And then feel that expansion into the back as you slowly release, drawing it away from the floor, exhale. One more breath into this deep inhale. And release, let go and exhale. So you maybe start to notice just with that breath, the body starting to calm down a little bit. Maybe that nervous system is starting to just be soothed a tiny bit. And that's just simply from using the breath. Taking one more inhale, pull the left heel in toward the bottom, feel the foot plant on the floor, make any micro adjustments here, maybe a little rolls through the hip. And then draw this right leg in, plant the foot on the floor. And again, you might need to make adjustments through the low back here, feeling the low, um, this nice little flat part of the body connect into the floor and then feel the toes just wiggle a little bit. So you're not clenching down into the floor, but finding a little movement here. Gently let the legs rock side to side, okay? And your side to side might, movement might be just a little bit here. Others might be able to bring the legs closer to the floor, but try to make it slow. Wind chill wipers and it's not a big giant storm out there. You just wanna gentle, movement through this hips and just really trying to warm up the hips but also this sacrum area. Settle into the middle and from here plant your right foot on the floor, lift your left leg up toward the sky and I want you to point your toes toward the ceiling. Okay so your leg can either be straight here or if your hamstrings are really tight there might be a deep bend in the knee. Either place is perfect. You might even need to grab behind the leg here. And I want you to push the heel up, pull the toes down toward the forehead. And again, it may look like this. Point the toes and then push the heel up, draw the toes down toward the forehead. Bend that left knee, let the heel drop down toward the bottom, wherever that space is for you. And then start to take this left leg over or uh, just above the right knee. And um, just kind of feeling this movement through the hips here. And again, it might be just a micro movement or this, you may have a little more um, space to swing that leg. And again, slow movement, no rush here. We have all the time in the world. And then pulling back into center, kick that left heel up toward the sky again, pull the right heel up to meet it, roll through the ankles, and then make sure you go both directions. Don't wanna walk in circles later. And then take this left heel down toward the floor, kind of that same movement again. So again, depending on how the hamstrings feel, the leg might be uh, more bent or you can really push up through the sky. So push up through the heel, pull the toes down toward the forehead. You might even feel it in the soles of the feet here and then point the toes toward the ceiling. Okay, just a little movement through the ankles here. Push the heel up, pull the forehead, uh, toes toward the forehead, don't do anything with your forehead, please. And then point the toes up and then pull the heels down. Now, from here, take your right ankle above the left leg. And again, depending on where this range of motion is for you or the ability to bend the knee, just kind of hang out here. And then maybe there's a little movement front to back or you're just gonna stay in this static space and then just let the body do what it needs to do. Stay with your breath. Take another inhale. 
exhale. Then begin to kick that left heel up toward the sky, or that's your right leg. Kick your right leg up toward the sky. Bring the left up to meet it. There we go. Now we're on the same page. And then roll through the ankles. And then swish the other direction. From here, pull those thighs down toward the ribs. Take a gentle rock side to side. Now you might be able to bring your legs closer to your chest here. Maybe you're just gonna hang on to the knees or you can grab onto the shins and draw them in. So take this little rock just side to side. So where you might be feeling it is right on the edges or the top of the um, bum or right along the edges of the spine, the muscles along the edges of the spine. We'll take a little rock side to side and you have two options here. You can roll to your side and then work your way up to seated, or you can rock front to back and pull yourself up to seated, kind of like a weeble wobble, okay? So from here, start to roll over, lift yourself up. Remember we had um, a class last or a couple months ago on how to go from seated to standing. And so that might be a place you can use some of those um, moves. From here, we'll extend the legs forward. This seems to be better. And then roll the inner thighs towards center. Okay, just a little bit of movement, especially if you feel your toes kind of drifting way out to the sides, just kind of lift and toes toward the sky. Feet can be about two fists distance apart, right? So just give yourself a little space, especially if you've got um, a belly and needs a place to hide, okay? So a little rock side to side, bring your hands to your shins and then lift up to the top here. Now, again, if your hamstrings are really tight, it might look more like this, especially um, hamstrings and low back are very strongly connected uh, as far as if your hamstrings are tight, you might really feel it in your low back. So just make adjustments where you need to. Hands to shins, press and lift. And if it's available to you, this might be your full posture right here. You might walk those hands down toward the feet, right? But you should be able to do this with ease, with um, the strength of your breath. If you have to hold your breath at all, find a way to come out of it until you can find that strong ability to pull, inhale and exhale. Slowly roll yourself up to seated. Start to pull this left leg in and then pull this right leg in. Okay, take a little pressure off of that um, low back or the hamstrings. So from here, we'll just take the right hand behind us, take the left hand to the top of the right shin. And then instead of thinking about trying to like crank yourself into a twist, I want you to sit up as tall as you can and start to take this right shoulder, just gently guiding it behind you. And that'll help generate that twist from the center of the back rather than everything coming from this low back, okay? So think about rotating, kind of keeping the ribs forward as much as possible to start with. And then just bringing this right shoulder back. Again, posture might be as simple as hand here or bringing this right hand all the way behind. Now, the other option to extend into the posture more is to keep your neck straight forward in alignment with the chest or start to bring your gaze over that back shoulder. Take a couple of breaths here. Let go, exhale. Take another inhale and slowly release back into center. Pull the chest up, lift through the heart. Shoulder blades come together. And from here, round the spine, bring the chin to the chest. Pull up to center again. Start to bring this left hand behind you. You don't have to switch on your mat. I just want you to be able to see what's happening. So take your left hand behind you. Again, connect with the shin on this, with this right hand. And then start to feel this rotation, keeping the ribs forward as much as you can of the shoulder moving toward the back of the room. Maybe you notice just a little difference from side to side in the mobility of the spine. That's common. And exhale. And also it's what's happening in the shoulder too. One more deep inhale. We'll exhale, come out of that twist, bring it back into center. Plant those feet, bring the hands to the shins and move through a few seated cat cows. So pulling the chin up toward the chest, draw the shoulder blades toward each other. And then as you move into that seated cow, you'll bring the shoulders forward, chin comes into chest, round the spine. And again, see if you can start that rounding of the spine 
just believe beneath the shoulder blades. Pull up and squeeze. Deep inhale. And then exhale, contract into that cow. Pull up again. And one more time, round the spine. And then pull up into that neutral spine. From here, we'll move into tabletop. So however you'd like to move into that space, some people like to cross and roll over the top of the shins. I'm gonna take it the other way, sweeping the legs around to the side and then coming up and into this tabletop. So tabletop is exactly like it sounds, shoulders over wrist, hips over knees and coming into the shape of the table, right? I want the, your toenail down toward the floor if your ankles bother you, you can always just kind of tuck under, but tops of the feet flat to the floor. Thumb presses into the mat, pointer finger, pinky press into the floor, and then kind of spread your fingertips just a little bit wide. Roll the inner elbows slightly forward. Take a deep breath, and then just exhale. Now, we'll move into those same cat cows, but with a little more intensity as you come into this seated or this um, kneeling space. So pull the tailbone underneath you, bring the chin into the chest, rise up into your cat and exhale. Feel the belly come down, tailbone comes up. Squeeze the shoulder blades together and then feel the length in the body from the pubic bone to the chin, lengthen on the front side of the body. Exhale, chin to chest, cat, lengthen on the back side. And then belly comes down, gaze comes up. Push into neutral, we'll come into cat cow one more time. Belly down, gaze comes up. And then come into that space where you're just kind of in between the two. Feel the belly put and pull up toward the spine. And then from here, I want you to take your gaze over your right shoulder and then look, see where maybe you can, maybe you're just like, I see my shoulder and that's all I got. Or you might have the ability to come around and maybe see your pinky toe. So just really kind of pressing that hip out to the side, and finding that deep, like a little C curve to the spine. We're just trying to move the back in all the different directions that it has ability for mobility. So come back into neutral. Push your right hip out, gaze over your left shoulder. Come into neutral, kind of shake it out a little bit if you need to. And then one more time, over that right shoulder. You don't usually do a lot of C curve movements with their spine. So this might feel good or different. And then gaze over that left shoulder, switching sides. And it feels good through the side body. Come back into neutral. Pull the chin into the chest, round the spine up and into your cat again. And then from here, start to let the forearms come down to the floor and let those wrists rest just a bit. Now, from here, I want you, this is, the posture is called um, puppy. So I want you to just shoulders over the elbows to start with. And this might be your full posture. If it feels too deep, like you're just like, oh, a long way down. You can come up onto blocks and this can be your start for puppy, okay? But what you're looking for is a little length through the spine, but also, coming into maybe a soft back bend, which that sounds scary. Just move to where that space, remember, soft face, nothing scary. And then from here, walk your hands forward just a tiny bit, okay? Let the chest sink down toward the floor and shoulder blades come in toward each other. Feel a gentle lift, push into the elbows and then soften between shoulder blades again. Press and lift, feel the belly lift, and then soft, gentle movement. Start to walk the hands back, bring the hands underneath the shoulders, and then feel the hips move back toward the heels here. So for some of you, you're like, hips are back toward the heels, lady, I can't move them any further. And others might be able to bring tiptoes together, drop the hips back toward the heels, We'll see how this goes. Ooh, there we go, did it. Okay, forearms forward. 
and then maybe forehead down toward the floor. Okay. Maybe your hips can ma stay, uh, maintain that connection to the hips and the heels. And maybe you're going to be up just a little bit higher. Feels kind of lovely on that low back lengthening, especially all your shoveling muscles, if that's where you've been. And if it's summertime, it's your gardening muscles. So there you go. Take a little lift up. Walk your hands over to the left side of your mat. And then just kind of walk and extend your right hand. Because I want you to have this length from your shoulder down to your hip. It's really opening through side body. And then come on up. Bring the hands back into center. Shake out the hips where you need to, any kind of movement here. And then let those hips come back toward the heels. Walk your hands over to the right side. And this time you'll walk your left hand a little bit further than your right if you have the space to do so. And remember, this might be not quite as much movement on the other side. Lengthen. And then come back up to center. Bring it back into your tabletop. Let's find that alignment again. So hips over knees, shoulders over wrists. And then tuck your toes under, lift the chin into the chest. So really kind of opening through the soles of the feet here. We'll start to move um, up and toward a standing posture. So feeling your hands connect down and into the floor, push away from the mat and feel the strength in the front side of the body, okay? Here, we'll just tuck your toes under, lift your hips. And then begin to walk your feet up to the top of the mat. Okay, I'm gonna use my blocks here and kind of have your feet two fists distance apart, right? Give yourself some space here. Take a little soft bend in the knees, kind of feel where things are moving for you and then let your hips come back a tiny bit. From here, push into your blocks or connect to the floor. Lift your hips up and let your head come down toward the floor. Come up, lift halfway, bring your hands to your thighs and then feeling the strength of the legs, I want you to lift the chest up, okay? Strong legs, strong belly help with some of that strengthening for the back so you, could, so you feel supported. From here, start to straighten the legs. Palms come forward and coming into this mountain pose, okay? Palms forward, roll the shoulders back. And then let's sweep the hands up toward the sky. Feeling that lift. Now, if this works for your shoulders, this is great. This also might be your lift toward the sky. Okay, be where you're at. From here, sweep the hands out to the sides. Find your forward fold. You can either connect with the shins. You can connect with this block. But I want you to just find this space where you can have a little bend in the knees and this head dipping toward the floor. Bring the hands to the thighs, lift the chest up, sink the hips back, squeeze your heels toward each other and let the hands come into the chest, slowly rise to standing, lift and expand. From here, we'll bring the elbows down and into the ribs, a little opening through the shoulder, lift through the chest, hands come toward the sky. Let's do that one more time. Exhale, fold forward and again, Hands can be at the shins or down to the blocks or to the floor. Inhale, half lift. So that means come onto your fingertips, torso parallel to the floor, hands to thighs. Sink your hips back, feel the chest rise, palms to heart center, and then lift to standing. Drop those elbows down and into the ribs. Bring the hands out to the sides, release the shoulders, maybe through the hips if you need to. We said we were gonna do backs, but we're also gonna make sure we've got some suppleness in the low back with that hips movement. And from here, we're gonna take this right leg and step it out toward the back of your mat. So from here, you want your toes all pointing toward the long side of your mat here, taking your block, 
you're maybe you've got a chair in front of you, maybe you can reach the floor, but I want you to have a little um, bounce in the knees here. So not stick straight legs, but a little bounce in the knees, push your hips back, connect with the block. Or again, if you're on a chair, just pressing into the chair, finding this space to come and you'll find this opening through the back part of the legs. Now, again, you might be here, connecting with the floor, wherever that is for you, take a deep breath and let Joe just exhale. See where your body actually takes you, where the edge of the posture is for you today. We'll start to come back up, bringing the hands to the thighs, feeling the chest lift, that little bit of buoyancy through the thighs or through the knees, bring the hands to the hips and rise to standing. Now, keeping your back foot planted, that's your right foot, hopefully. We're gonna take your left foot, rotate it and just kind of rotate on the heel and point toward the top of your mat, okay? This is set us up for warrior two. It's also a kind of a lovely way to just drop into this front knee, bend the left knee or front knee, whatever that happens to be. See if you can keep your shoulders over the top of the hips and then this soft tuck of the belly in toward the spine. Extend the arms front to back. And if the neck allows, bring your gaze over your front hand to the same side where the knee is bent. Reach forward, pull it back into center. Again, trying to maintain this length on the sides of the body. Come back into center, reach forward, and then bring this left forearm down to the top of the left leg. Right hand lifts toward the sky. So the posture is called side angle. It's not side like crunch. So you're lengthening as much as you can on this side that's closest to the bent leg. So you're lifting toward the sky and then also sinking toward the floor. Take another breath. Exhale. Then bring yourself back up for the strength in the legs. Straighten your front knee, bring your hands to your hips and rotate this left foot to the long side of the mat again. So here we are right back into this space. From here, I want you to just step back to the top of your mat, find that stability at the top of your mat, palms forward and exhale. Okay, from here, step your left foot back. I'm gonna step my right foot back, so don't get confused by it. I'm gonna step, I'll step uh, your left foot back. Feel that soft bend in the knees, maybe even a little shimmy side to side. Soft bend in the knees, that buoyancy through the legs, push your hips back. So it's like a wide kind of seat or like, I'm listening, I'm very intense in what you have to say, okay? So drop your hips back. Maybe the hands come down toward the floor or this might be your full forward fold. Hands to the floor or to a block if you've got it. Let your toes wiggle a little bit. Don't get so ground into the floor. Take a big breath. And then where you have the space, exhale forward fold. One more breath. Exhale. Start to bring your hands to your thighs if they're not already there. That little bit of buoyancy or bend in the knees. Hands come to hips and then rise to standing. From here, rotate your right foot toward the top of your mat. Okay, so this back one stays where it's at. Your feet are perpendicular to each other. Heel to arch alignment here. And then again, shoulders may, staying over the top of the hips. So th sometimes this rotation feels a little odd. If you can take a peek at your front knee, make sure your knee is going towards your middle toe or your pinky toe, so you don't want it to sickle into center. But really kind of lengthen on this inner thigh. Bend the knee and extend the arms front to back. Now, if your shoulders are like, no, thank you, ma'am, you can bring your hands to your hips and this can be your full posture for warrior two. Extend front to back and then reach toward the wall or the top of your mat. Bring it into center, reach forward, maintaining that strength in that front leg, back into center, maintaining this length on the right side of the body as you reach forward, and then bringing your forearm down to the leg, left arm rises to the sky or settles at the hip.
lengthening through this right side of the body. Push into feet, lift on up. Rotate to the side, just bringing those hips back into neutral and then find your way back to the top of the mat again. All right, Ooh. haven't done that in a while. Palms forward, just find that little half sun salute again, that movement through the body. We'll sweep the hands up toward the sky, reach, 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 expand. Soft bend in the knees as you forward fold. Inhale for the half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Soften in the knees, sweep the hands up, maybe bringing hands to thighs, and then rise to standing as you lift toward the ceiling, drop the elbows into the ribs. All right, return those hands to the hips, and let's play with chair here. We'll do uh, chair, and there's also, a, we're gonna add a little twist to it. So remember, as you move into these twists, be where you're at in your own body. Okay, so chair and again, hips underneath the shoulders, feel the kind of lift and back through the feet, lift and back. So you're looking for this spot kind of right in the center, maybe even a little weight back toward the heels. From here, You'll feel the weight start to just kind of lift out of the toes a little bit and you'll feel your bum or your seat come back, trying to keep the knees over the ankles as much as possible and feeling strength of chair. Now, if you've got an actual chair in front of you, this might be your perfect posture or use your handy dandy wall, right? Wall sits, ugh, right? Bring your hips back. <clears throat> Take your right hand to your right hip and then your left hand to your right leg. So your full twist might be just a little bit here, or you can bring your shoulder back a little bit more and sink into that a tiny bit deeper. Slowly bring your left hand to your left hip, bring it into center, straighten the legs, let them rest a little bit, shake it out. And then sink the hips back, take right hand over to this left leg, and again, just a simple act of bringing it across the center line it might be where your posture is, or you can push into it a little bit and bring the left shoulder back. Softness in the face. One more inhale. Slowly release, right hand to right hip, straighten the legs. Shake it out a little bit. Now, if your hamstrings feel like you haven't moved them in a long time, you might want to block for this next posture, but you will definitely want to modify. So we'll start with feet forward. Take your right leg and we'll step it back like you're just going to take one step backward. Okay. One step backward, let the heel rest on the floor. And toes are all pointing forward. And there is, you can see like you were on train tracks here, skis, whatever you want it to be. But there is some distance and your hips are remaining forward in this posture. Push back into your back heel here. And I want you to feel the lift and lengthen from pubic bone to chin. Lift through this whole front line of the body without adding a back bend into it, right? So you wanna kind of pull the tailbone in and lift. So strong and long through the backside. Now, there is a micro bend in this front leg. As you bring your chest forward, full posture might be here, using the leg as an anchor. Maybe you can bring your hands down to this block. Maybe the block is lower or your hands connect to the floor, okay? But while you're doing all of those different places to explore, you're trying to maintain this length in the front line and the back side of the body, okay? You'll notice a um, big expansion through the back of this front leg in that hamstring, and you might even need to bend your knees a little bit to find the ease in the posture, but really trying to lift up and away from the floor. Posture is called pyramid. Strong breath. Come back onto your fingertips, bring your hands to your hips, push into your heel. This might be the hard part is the lifting part, right? Finding strength in your hamstring. Step your right foot forward. Move what you need to do, shake what your mama gave you, and then step your left foot back. 
again, just like you're going to be like, oh, what's back there, man? Hey, right? So finding that uh, soft step back. I'm going to bring my friend up here. Bring your hands to your hips. Maybe it's hands to the thigh. If you don't have a block or a prop, maybe it's hands to the shin or down to the floor or connecting into this block. But again, maintaining all of that length in the front side of the body as you come into the posture. Did you forget to breathe? Can you breathe just like when you were lying on the floor and breathe into your back, the space between your shoulder blades, that big deep inhale? Wiggle your toes a little bit. One more breath. And slowly begin to lift your way out of the posture, bringing hands to hips or walking up the leg. Step your left foot forward and then a little shake through the legs. Palms are forward, roll those shoulders back. We'll start to move down toward the floor. So from here, hands rise, lift, breathe it in, big inhale. Exhale, fold it forward. Inhale for the half lift. And then exhale, either connecting with your blocks or down to the floor or using a chair or however you want to get down to the floor. I've seen lots of different ways to get here, but pushing into the blocks will just demonstrate it this way. Walk your feet back, bring your knees down toward the floor. Let your hips come back toward your heels. And again, finding whatever variation you have for child's pose. Should feel an opening through this low back. And you should really feel the breath expanding down and in toward the legs. Push into the hands, draw yourself forward. From here, finding a little strength through the back and also playing with balance a tiny bit. So we'll take this right leg and just simply slide it toward the back of the room. You're gonna feel your toes push down and into the floor and then like press your heel back. Now, if you feel this right hip kind of lifting up, I want you to bring everything square to the floor. And for some, this might be your full posture. It feels really good, kind of an opening through the belly, maybe even through the calf. Others might be able to lift this right leg up, strong squeeze for the glutes, squeeze your booty and then bring this right leg down. Lift this right leg and release and then lift. Okay. Draw the right leg in, push down into the floor, lift up into your cat, so around the spine, into neutral, slide the left foot back, square it up, Pull the belly up. So you don't want to sink into your shoulder blades. You want to pull the shoulder blades wide so you're strong on this whole front side of the body. Squeeze the glutes, so strong grease, squeeze through the derriere, and then lift this left leg. Push back through the heel. And again, just a little pump up might be enough, right? You can always work into more. Lift. Slow it down. No, it's no rush. Lift one more time and then pull this left leg in. Roll through the hips. So you're gonna roll in a circle here and then roll through the wrist too. If this feels like it's a lot for your knees, you can always get like one of those little gardening pads that feels pretty good. Settle back into center. Now you have to swish the other direction. All right. Come back into center and then find your way onto your seat, however you'd like. Some again can cross here, roll back, or you'll swing your legs around. Bring your feet forward and then kind of rotate into center, okay? It's a better way to do that than all this business, easier on your hamstrings. Now, take your left leg, pull the heel in toward the bottom. Posture might be here. Okay, posture might be heel in toward bottom. But what you're doing here as you pull this left leg in is you're lengthening the muscles on the, 
um, back, right? Because they've got to have this space to move up. And so just notice where that is for you. Take your hands to your right leg and you might be like, and we're done. Or you can walk the hands down toward this right foot. Ooh, baby. Okay. You also might feel if you've got a little bit of a belly, like this deep compression through the belly and you might need to make room for that. So the leg might come way out to the side and look more like this, okay? Come might be out here, especially if you gotta make room for it, right? It's there. Let's not pretend it's not happening, right? So slowly roll yourself up. And then from here, you'll take your left hand, bring it behind you. And then this again can be full twist, just kind of bringing your chest pointing toward the knee. Otherwise you can start to bring your shoulder back, maybe bring the arm to the outside of the leg, come into a deeper expression of the posture. Can you breathe? Deep breath. Exhale. One more inhale. And then slow release back into center, extend the left leg, shake it out a little bit, draw the right leg in, and then see where things are on this side, okay? So not each side, each side may not be equal. So just play with where you're at as you draw the heel back, you're lengthening through the spine and then extending this right hand down toward the left foot. And again, full posture might be here, make room for your belly. and breathe. One more inhale here. Slowly lift up, take your right hand. That's the one that was reaching toward your left foot. You'll bring that behind you or out to the side. Left hand comes to the shin or um, shin, knee, outer leg, and then gently moving into your variation of a twist on this side, okay? And again, don't crank yourself into anything slowly move into it. And as soon as you get that little like um, rebound sensation that like boop, boop, and it kind of wants to push back, that's as far as you need to go. Then you take another breath and then play with where you're at. Going deeper and finding deeper intensity is not always the answer, trust me, okay? Slowly come back into center and then we'll just find a little reset, extending both feet forward kind of rocking side to side. And if you need more space, go wider. If that feels better for your back and your hamstrings, then feel free to do that. Then bring your hands to your thighs, shins or toes as you find your forward fold. Exhale. Start to walk up to seated, bring the feet with you. And from here, we'll start to go back down and onto the floor. So you'll start to roll down and onto your back. And as you roll down and into this space, slow as you, yes, the slow as you need to, however you need to get there. Some might have to crawl down to a little bit more or you can come here, or if you're still doing this in a chair, you can um, just come into an easy seat, just kind of settle in. Let the legs just drift side to side. Oh. Feels kind of lovely, doesn't it? Let the hands drift out to the sides. And then we'll take the, the knees and then, uh, or first of all, bring your thighs. Let's start there. Thighs into your ribs. Full posture might be just, you're gonna hang out here. Now, some of you, this might be where you're gonna hang out. Maybe you can just reach the back of the legs and others might be able to come up into your happy baby. Mm. I'm gonna hang out here, but happy day would be grabbing the soles of the feet and kind of a rock side to side like this with both legs. Take that rock. Okay, and then kick the heels up toward the sky. Kind of a soft bend in the knees. I want you to reach, reach behind, grab behind the legs and then slowly draw the forehead toward the knees as you draw the legs in. Release the head to the floor, heels release down toward the floor. And we're moving into that final relaxation posture. We call it Shavasana. Um, it's just basically your little yoga nap. 
if you were to come into um, a class at a studio more so than a class that's online, this posture will be anywhere from four to five minutes. Okay, so what we'll just keep it as a short, maybe 30 seconds today. If you need more time, always take more time. But from here, you can either take a little, um, especially if your back is, feels sensitive, bring a little bolster, blanket, pillow, whatever you've got underneath your thighs and come to reclined. Or you can simply just extend your legs forward, feet come wide, get comfortable here, and then reconnect right hand to chest, left hand to belly. Strong inhale. And then release, let go, exhale. Let go of what no longer serves you, whatever you shook up and shook out of your body this morning. Maybe you notice a soft little hum through the body. Or just a general feeling of like, ha. Huh. Deep inhale. And then let go, exhale. We'll start to move out of Shavasana. Begin to wiggle the toes and the fingertips. Maybe a roll through wrists and ankles. And again, if you'd like to take longer in that time to rest, feel free to do that, especially if you are watching the recording. Um, pull the heels in toward the bottom. So just feel the knees bend, a little lift or readjusting through the legs and the low back side to side. And from here, you'll take a drift over to the left or the right side. Why not? We're here, right? So coming over to this right side and then beginning to press yourself up and into seated. So however you would like to come into your easy seat, you can have your legs extended, legs crossed. I think I'm just gonna hang out um, right here. Works, palms down and then feel this gentle lift through the chest. Now, on your next breath, feel that breath come in and see if you can take that inhale and then feel the back expand on your breath. Open the mouth, exhale. Shoulders soften, taking one more breath here, deep inhale. Expand into the back and then release, let go, exhale. Let's start to bring the hands up toward the sky. Palms come together and letting the thumbs rest at the space between the eyebrows. Just a reminder that, you know, may your thoughts bring you wisdom today. As the thumbs float in front of the lips, may your words speak truth. And then as you come bringing those thumbs down and into heart center, a simple reminder that may your actions continually show compassion. So as you move throughout the day, bringing your thoughts, your words, and your deeds into this space of compassion and peace, and um, may you have a very lovely, wonderful day. And from my heart to yours, wishing you the deepest of peace in those most beautiful days.